In today's video, I redecorate my Tank Tales aquariums with new plants and new backgrounds. Plus, we check in on my little orange tetra who previously had his tail bitten off by my big, mean killifish. Hello and welcome to Tank Tales, a beginner's guide to aquariums, aquaponics, and fish tank fun. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you're notified each and every time I publish a new video. In last week's episode of Tank Tales, two of my guppies gave birth to a new batch of guppy fry. It's difficult to count exactly how many fry were born, but my guess is that there's somewhere between 20 and 25 fry now living in my largest 20 gallon kitchen counter aquarium. Since this is my second batch of guppy fry that I've raised, I feel much more confident in what I'm doing this time around. Guppy fry are pretty easy to care for after all. I basically just feed them two or three times each day with a small pinch of ground up fish flakes. Because the fry are essentially independent from the moment they're born, there's no need to baby these intelligent little fish. Just drop some fish flakes into their tank and then sit back as the fry swim up to the top of the aquarium and begin to feed. While I've been enjoying my hobby of raising these various breeds of fish over the last year, I've not been very pleased with the overall appearance of my three tanks. I like my Guppy Castle Kingdom tank the most. It's the most completely decorated tank after all. It has a deep blue background, several plastic plants scattered throughout the tank, a large castle feature for which the Guppy Castle Kingdom gets its name, and several small rocks placed in strategic locations throughout the aquarium. Along with the various types of fish that call this 10 gallon fish tank home, the Guppy Castle Kingdom doesn't look half bad. The other two aquariums, however, are in a pretty sad state. My second 10 gallon fish tank, where my aggressive Golden Wonder Killifish is currently housed, has 70% of what you might find in a finished aquarium, but the tank is missing a background of any kind, and could certainly do with a few more plants and or decorations in order to fill out the rest of the small glass enclosure. My largest 20 gallon aquarium is the saddest fish tank of them all. Other than the fake rock bridge and the large real rock that I've sat upon the river gravel that spread out on the bottom of the aquarium, this fish tank has absolutely nothing going for it. It's empty, it's depressing, and it's ugly. I've been wanting to decorate my fish tanks for a very long time, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money doing it, which is why I've gone for almost a year without doing anything significant to make my fish tanks look any better. But I recently ordered two new backgrounds and a bag full of plastic plants to decorate these two aquariums. So let's get to work and transform these two Tank Tales aquariums into magical worlds that my fish will be happy to call home. I decided to start with a smaller 10 gallon fish tank. I scooped out the killifish and placed them in a large kitchen pot. Then I removed all of the decorations from inside the tank and began emptying the old water from the aquarium, draining it into a 5 gallon bucket and then dumping that bucket of water into my kitchen sink. Once the water had been drained, I was able to wipe the insides of the glass enclosure down with a sponge, but while doing so, I accidentally slammed my elbow into the back of the aquarium and broke the glass. Luckily, I had another 10 gallon aquarium down in my basement, so I went and got the other aquarium and brought it up to my kitchen. After cleaning out this other 10 gallon aquarium, it was all dirty and dusty, I transferred the river rocks from the broken aquarium into the second 10 gallon tank. Then I went to work on taping the new background onto the back of the aquarium. Instead of using the blue side of the background like was done in the Guppy Castle Kingdom, I decided to use the black background instead. Once the background had been cut and taped to the back of the aquarium, I moved the fish tank back into position on my kitchen counter and then began filling the tank back up with water. Once the tank was full, I went to work on placing the decorations and new plastic plants inside the tank, positioning one plant at a time with the taller plants in the back the medium sized plants in the middle, and the shorter plants up front. Once I had things looking the way I liked them, I scooped my killifish up and placed him back inside his newly decorated aquarium, only for him to swim back into one of the corners and hide.
After the Killifish's 10-gallon home was complete, I set my sights on cleaning out the larger 20-gallon aquarium, which I knew was going to be difficult not only because the aquarium was larger, but because I had 20 or more small guppy fry now living in the aquarium, and I knew that in order to get the new background in place, I'd need to drain out most of the aquarium's water without disturbing the guppy fry now living in the tank. To do this, I used my gravel vacuum to slowly drain the aquarium of most of its water. I placed the gravel vac in the corner of the tank, hoping that the fry would stay away and wouldn't be sucked up into my bucket below. But the fry were curious about what was happening inside their enclosure and came over to investigate on occasion. And I did my best to scare the fry away from the opening of the gravel vacuum with my hand. After the aquarium was about 80% empty, I was finally able to flip the tank around and access its backside, which is what I needed to do in order to attach the new background to the glass on the rear side of the aquarium. I cut the new background to size and then taped the plastic background to the rear of the tank, once again with the black side facing in and the blue side facing out where no one will ever see it. Once the background was in place, I slid the heavy aquarium still full of water, gravel, and two dozen guppy fry back into position and began filling the tank back up with water. Just as I had done with the smaller 10 gallon killifish aquarium, once the tank was full of water, I went about the process of redecorating, placing the larger rock features in the aquarium first and then adding the fake plastic plants. The tall plants in the back, the medium plants somewhere in the middle, and the shorter little grass plants up front. In this aquarium, I decided to mix some of the older plastic plants that I had found previously on Facebook Marketplace with these newer bright green plants that I had just recently purchased. And the end result was an aquarium that looked quite natural, I think, especially when compared with the killifish tank, which looks much more green. I had a few more plastic plants left over in the end, so I threw those plants into the Guppy Castle Kingdom just to fill the aquarium out a little bit more. In a little over an hour, I had redecorated all three of my Tank Tales aquariums. Just look, here's what the Guppy Castle Kingdom looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. Here's what the Killifish Tank looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. And here's what the large Guppy Fry Aquarium looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. Pretty big difference, don't you think? I'll surely continue to move the plants and tank decorations around as time progresses, but I think this has been a fantastic overhaul to my three kitchen counter aquariums. While I've got you here, take a look inside my Guppy Castle Kingdom and let me know if you see anything different. Did you notice that my three orange tetra look a lot healthier than they did in the past? I had to move the tetra in with the guppies several months ago, after my killifish began nipping at their tails. The smallest of my tetra actually lost his entire tail fin, and I was sure he was going to die, but he has since miraculously regrown his entire tail fin, and he seems 100% back to normal now. To be honest, I didn't even know that fish could regrow body parts, kind of like lizards do. So I'm pretty amazed that this little orange tetra is not only alive, but seems to be back to his old, happy, and healthy self. In next week's episode, we continue to follow the development of my new batch of guppy fry. Plus, I'll introduce you to some of the live plants living in my home, and I'll share my plans with you for an aquaponics live plant aquarium. And now, it's time for the Tank Tales Question of the Week. What do you think about the new look of my three Tank Tales aquariums? Which color background do you like most? The blue background, like you see in the Guppy Castle Kingdom, or the black backgrounds like you see in the Killifish and Guppy Fry aquariums? Leave a comment and let me know. If you like the blue background more, I may flip the backgrounds on my other two aquariums around in the future. And if you like the black backgrounds more, I may change around the background inside the Guppy Castle Kingdom. Did you enjoy this video? I hope you did, and I can't wait for you to see next week's episode. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to smash that subscribe button and the bell icon now so you get notified each and every time I publish a new Tank Tales video. 
Also, don't forget to hit the like button. That really does a lot to help me out, and I appreciate your support very much. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel as I plan on adding new Tank Tales videos like this one on a regular basis, and your support will help to ensure that I can make more videos in the future.